Two days after Zimbabwe's harmonized elections, six people were shot dead, approximately 20 injured by gunfire, and many more beaten severely in the country's capital city. The president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Mnangagwa, immediately blamed the tragedy on the opposition MDC alliance. Hold the opposition MDC alliance and its whole leadership responsible for this disturbance of national peace, which was meant to disrupt the electoral process. Two days later, the president announced that he would be appointing an international commission to investigate the post-election violence. But I've told uh, the nation that I'm going to institute an independent commission to inquire into the issues we have raised. And this independent co uh, uh, commission will both be composed by our nationals as well as foreign nationals from outside Zimbabwe so that it has the full stamp of being an independent uh, commission. On 29 August, the seven-member commission was announced comprising Mr. Kalema Motlante, a former president of South Africa. He is the commission's chairman. Mr. Rodney Dixon, QC, a British barrister. Chief Emeka Anayuku, a former Commonwealth Secretary General. General Davis Mwamuyange, a former head of the Defence Forces of Tanzania. Charity Manyeruke, a professor at the University of Zimbabwe. Love Mo Maduku, also a professor at the University of Zimbabwe. Ms. Wimbai Nyemba, a former president of the Law Society of Zimbabwe. The commission requested written submissions by 12 October and began public hearings shortly afterwards. From the day of the shootings, there have been denials, disputes and counter-narratives surrounding responsibility for the dead and wounded. This video submission is the result of numerous interviews with the wounded and witnesses and reviewing of hours of amateur and professional video footage and photographs. Prior to August 1st, the NDC Alliance called upon its supporters to defend their vote and refused to accept any result but a clear victory for the party. So please, step aside, Mr. Mnangagwa. Allow the people, we thank you for the seven months of your duty, but thank you this time no further. We will not allow a repeat of 2018. And this is why we have told all our people, be ready to defend your vote. Be ready to protect your vote. Be ready to secure your voice. As the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission slowly released the results, the historic distrust among MDC supporters grew and in turn was amplified by the leadership. Chamisa! 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 You know that Chamisa is, is the winner. Chamisa has got victory in his hands. It's a war. It's a war. This is the beginning of a war. This is the beginning of a war. The ZEC announcements of results were slow and in no apparent logical order, but they did largely comply with the electoral legislation as it stood at the time. It was within this atmosphere of distrust that the crowd that had been gathered outside the MDC Alliance headquarters since the closing of polls became more agitated and outspoken on August 1st. That morning, the crowd, numbering up to 400 individuals, moved up Nelson Mandela Avenue towards the Zanu PF provincial offices on Simon Muzenda Avenue, formerly 4th Street. Once there, elements in the crowd began a sustained attack on the building, throwing stones and setting fire to the vehicles. The building was guarded by members of the police support unit who proceeded to fire warning shots into the air. Despite denials from the policemen on duty, one demonstrator was hit in the stomach by a bullet and died shortly afterwards. No other persons with weapons were seen by witnesses or in investigations of existing video. Demonstrators then congregated in Rotten Row, 
outside ZANU PF headquarters and the Harare International Conference Center that housed the ZEC Command Center. The demonstrations were rowdy and included some stone throwing at ZANU PF headquarters, the lighting of fires in the road, and vandalism of street signs and dustbins. Again, members of the police support unit were seen firing their weapons. The crowd did not exceed 500 people. And I saw there were a lot of people. <laughs> the crowd was almost around 400, 400 to 500 now. And there was some fire, and I thought there was a vehicle burning. I was informed it was a, the president's banner that they had removed from a building, and they had set on fire. At no time in any of the video footage reviewed did the anti-right police look threatened, in danger of losing control, or unable to restore calm given the equipment and weapons at their disposal. Nonetheless, Chief Superintendent Ngube decided to invoke the Public Order and Security Act, POSA, and call in the National Reaction Force. This law is no longer in line with Zimbabwe's new constitution that came into force in 2013. When I spoke to my officer commanding, he was saying, can't your men, power, your men challenge these people? And I said to him, say, even if I had 200 police officers to confront this crowd, I don't think they would win. So the next thing I had to communicate to him again to say, now we need reinforcement. I had to write another letter to say, can we have assistance of the military? The National Reaction Force comprises members of the Presidential Guard, military, air force, support unit, and the Central Intelligence Organization and had been put in place three weeks before the election. Under POSA, any military intervention should then fall within his command. But that was the time when I got there, that was the time I had uh, some gunshots and came to know that uh, the military had got into town. The police commander is adamant that none of his officers fired a single shot. Remember, the police support unit officers guarding the ZANU PF provincial and national headquarters were under a separate command. When the soldiers arrived on August 1st, very few of them were identifiable through normal regalia and many obscured their identity with masks or balaclavas. They were armed with whips, shamboks and automatic rifles. When the military chiefs testified before the Motlante Commission, their assessment of the situation on the ground was very different from the officer that called them to intervene. Representing the military was head of the Presidential Guard and the National Reaction Force, Brigadier General Anselim Sanyatwe, and the head of Zimbabwe Defense Forces, General Philip Valerio Sibanda. While Chief Inspector Ngube claimed the crowd was up to 450, the military representatives claimed that it exceeded 4,500. The commander of the platoon in Sector Chale, Lieutenant Colonel Mangezi, had asked for reinforcement because he was unable to handle the situation as the number of rioters had swollen to approximately 4,000, 4,500. Mube claimed that his force of 167 anti-right police and police support unit were unable to subdue the rowdy crowd of 400. The military commanders claimed that they quickly subdued a crowd of 4,500 without shooting anyone. In fact, they claimed that all shots fired by their men were in the air and the deaths had occurred before they were summoned to the CBD. They do admit to using whips and baton sticks, but only under extreme duress. My question was slightly different. It's, it's whether you heard of any allegations made about your forces beating people. Did you hear any allegations like that? I only heard speculation in the social media. Okay. But no formal report was that's, presented. That's okay. no, no formal that was brought to your attention. Yes, sir. Okay. Minimum force commensurate with the situation was applied as the troops first gave verbal warning to the rioters to disperse. After failing to comply, 
The troops used whips and button sticks and only in extreme circumstances fired warning shots. I don't believe that any of the soldiers could have fired. Yes, they fired in the air, but I don't believe any could have fired at, I mean, aimed shots at individuals. I don't believe so. Thank you. The most publicly distributed footage of a soldier firing is the kneeling soldier in Jason Moyo Avenue shooting eastward. They were given orders to advance and not to take uh, kneeling positions. So when that fellow took a kneeling position, he had obviously contradicted the order that was given of advancing. And this is why the other one tapped him to tell him that, that what he was doing was not uh, per the orders. The particular soldier that the video you are referring to was taken whilst on kneeling position. Yes, indeed, he took that position because he was avoiding missiles that were being thrown to him. If you check properly, military experts, that rifle was being fired at an angle of 45 degrees in the air and not direct to the rioters. These videos show neither statements to be true. The gun is aimed at civilians and there are no projectiles being hurled, let alone in the direction of the kneeling officer. On another occasion, a different group of soldiers are at the corner of Nelson Mandela and Angwa Street. Wisdom Chipere was on his way home from work just a few hundred meters away from these soldiers. And I did not the situation quite serious. Then I walked towards Nyerere, towards Samor, Dilum Nanyere. As I was approaching the Zimpost, in the side of Zimpost, I was walking to the Zimpost. I was walking to the Zimpost. Chichifura chichi kuidza kwenda na Nelson Mandela. Ndanda mira kwa kangu wawo wana wapedza o dispace. Nda kontinia futi ni chifamba ni nzira yangu ni chienda. Then ndanda shika pa kona, pa zimpo stichaipu. Pa kona nyerere and Nelson Mandela. Nda shika pa apu nda ka mira, nda ka tarisa. Neche kumsuru kwa wangu waka mira. Dopa ndaka wana masoji angari po. Wano wano kwansa wangu angari 8 kana 9. Waka wangu 4 wangu kumsore koku. Asina wangu mila wangu tarisa kumsore koku. For a while. Apangwa yoyo. Dopa katanga kurira foot. Foot yaka zaka tanga kurira. Yekutanga kutanga kwazu. Andena kuzu inzo wabu wazi nda roo. Ni foot. Saka ndaka bata ma paint sangu. Ukozi ndaka nzo wakuru. What is the oxygen guide? Ndaka bata ma paint sangu. Ndaka kota ma kwekangua. Ndaka so simza msoro nduwa. Ndaka nzo kontinya kwa mabara shakari. Ndaka nda tanga kumanya. Tuwa zisamura ye. Dijifurira ni ruwendo lele asi. Ndaka uzo manya kungu ya katrebe. Pa 50 meters. Ndaka vanda dona pass. Ndaka kwa rapa sika rozi. Yaka ruwa shuku furi, ichi ichi kanga nsa sika rozi, and also the side of the groin. While it looks like the soldiers are firing in the air, watch closely at the soldier in the background. 
He is shooting from the shoulder at a level position towards the intersection of Nelson Mandela and Julius Nyerere, just a few hundred meters away. Love Day Munesi was also making his way home in the same area on that day. So when I was walking towards uh, Nelson Mandela, when I was close to Fidelity, that's when the truck for soldiers came close to uh, Harvest House. Then as it came, people started running because they were now firing shots. So some were, uh, started running sideways. Uh, Julius Nyerere were somewhere running towards Nelson Mandela. So that's when I turned back and I started running uh, down uh, Nelson Mandela up to, um, to Takawira. That's when I was shot on my uh, buttock, on my right buttock. So as soon as the truck came in just by Harvest House, that instant time is when we started hearing some fire shots. So with that, I'm sure that the soldiers are the one who shot me. The police were just seated in their trucks and uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't any violence then. The violence only started and the gunshots only started when the soldiers came. So uh, at, at the point right now, I'm living with a bullet in my body. It's causing chronic pain, severe chronic pain, especially when it gets cold. The bullet will start uh, producing much pain and it comes as a heartbeat and it, it seems it is moving because the pain, I started feeling it on my upper, but now it's now on the down here. Living with the bullet is causing much pain even on my back here. I can't stand for long, I have to use a walking stick. I can't walk for long distance even if I'm using walking stick. Those are the challenges amongst others that I'm having. While the injuries to Wisdom and Love Day cannot be linked directly to the shootings of the soldier highlighted, neither can they be ruled out. What is certain is that soldiers fired directly at innocent civilians. Let us now turn to the investigations to date. Both generals Sanyatwe and Sibanda claim the possibility of a third force armed and dangerous that may have been responsible for the deaths and injuries by gunfire. Further, the possibility of the vanguard, the militant group within the MDC Youth Alliance, the MDC Alliance Youth League, having weapons and having used these during the disturbances on that day cannot be ruled out. But the investigation to date has focused only on vandalism and incitement. And in that regard, 41 arrests have been made. There has been no in-depth investigation into the deaths, bullet injuries or the so-called involvement of an armed third force. General Sibanda admits that the military investigation closed after a matter of a few days. Well, it was a very quick one. It was, I think, two, three or four days. If a third force exists and is armed and responsible for shooting innocent civilians in the middle of Harare, this would surely be the priority of any investigation. With regard to the laws of Zimbabwe, under Section 213 of the Constitution, only the President can authorize the deployment of the Defence Forces in support of the police in the maintenance of law and order. Although Section 37 of the Public Order and Security Act suggests that the Minister of Defence can authorise their deployment if requested by the Minister of Home Affairs, the section is contrary to the Constitution and therefore invalid. And yet straight after the shootings, President Munangagwa stated that the constitutional right to deploy the army had been invoked, but not by him even though, as Commander-in-Chief, he is the only one legally empowered to do so. I'm informed that after the banning of several vehicles, I think you've seen that, after the banning of several uh, vehicles and the locking up of people in uh, a room to ban them, the police, was, the police were overwhelmed and then they summoned, as is required under our constitution, assistance from the army. Zimbabwe's constitution also states that all killing is unlawful in Zimbabwe. Under Section 86, Part 3 of the constitution, the right to life is sacrosanct and no law can limit or violate it. Therefore, the deaths in Harare on August 1st are unlawful killings, murders 
and should be investigated as such. Due to the time frame of the Motlantia Commission, this preparatory version has been prepared and submitted to the Commission as evidence. As more evidence is gathered, it will be presented to the public and relevant authorities in an attempt to ensure that justice is done for the victims of August 1st.